This is like the worst tire experience I've ever had in my life. I mean, they completely destroyed that lug nut and then they can't mount a tire to hold air. down to is somebody else worked on my vehicle and I trusted them to do a good job they did a horrible job and then I just about had to foot the bill fortunately because of my background in automotive my ability to keep my cool and not freak out I was able to explain what happened concise and because I filmed the crap out of everything let's be honest the manager of the place was awesome he took care of me and so I'm not gonna drop any names or anything because I don't think that that would be necessary uh, but I am going to cover some of the steps and things that led up to the problem and the way that I was able to solve the problem. And that's what this video is about. So if you follow me on Instagram and you saw me vent before I deleted it, please don't drop names. I will erase the comment. So if you saw that, just know that they did right by me. And uh, let's talk about this. So this is the damaged lug nut. I'm going to use nozzle dip from the welder. I'm going to smear it around the surface of the wheel. This really helps things to not weld on or burn onto the tip. So we're going to try it here. Let's see how it does here. I don't know if it's because of the electrical properties or the fire resistance. It seems to stay in place when things get hot. After all, anytime you try something new, it's crazy until it works. So I'm going to use the right tool for the job, which is an extractor that grips it without crushing onto it. Well, the paint's for shit, so it's like we're, oh, no, nope, that gel's working. Burn the gel, but not the tire. That's good. Another thing that you can do is take the socket and hit it onto the base of the nut break up any corrosion. Unholy stuck. You have to chisel it. I'm not excited about that. That sucks. I think. Possibly ignite. This is a really soft lug nut. I mean, I can't express how easily this is chiseling. So this is what I have it down to now. I've got most of it removed. I've got a whole lot more of that gel in there. A little dinged up from the chisel. Jeez, man. That should be deep enough. I don't need that. So here's where we at. I've got most all of it gone. I've drilled down into the burl. Looks like I swung and missed a couple of places. First one of these I've done this way. Never run into one that was foobarred that bad. Must have really hammered that socket on hard. I can't grip this stupid thing. So we've got some of these hose type needle nose pliers that are bent. You can see where it sticks out and then I've got them duct taped and then electrical tape to fill the gap. I'm gonna have a lovely assistant hold that. So we're trying to bust the wheel stud through the brake rotor and get it free from that and at the same time bust through the rest of this. As I'm banging the piss out of this thing and denting the wheel all the shit, my wife says, Hey, don't you have a laser or a plasma cutter thingy? And I'm like, yeah. Pretty good hollow spot. And the fire alarm again. Great. Fun! But after burning it out with the plasma cutter, um, I got it to crack a little bit. And of course, once you get it to crack a little bit, you can get it to crack a lot. So there's the bad lug nut. 
plasma cutter really came in handy on this. I don't know what the rim's gonna look like by the time I'm done, but I'll tell you one thing's for sure, I need a new wheel stud. So here's a lug nut, you can see where I broke through a little bit right there. But for the most part, that's pretty clean on the bevel. At least I got the wheel off. This is why it's a good idea to learn to work on your own car if you can. So this is a Chrysler lug nut. It's a two-piece system. There's the lug nut and then it's got a cap on it. And the cap's about a half millimeter thick. So when you look at the 18 millimeter lug nut and then the cap on it, it comes up to just shy of 19 millimeters, so a 19 millimeter socket will fit on it. And they take a beating and eventually they fall apart and they look like this. You can see these are bonded around the outside edge. And you can see where the break happened. And the caps are really hard, they're welded in place, but the nut underneath is really soft. And because it's so soft, if you're going through a whole bunch of lug nuts that look like this with a 19 millimeter socket, and you come onto a lug nut like this that's now less than 18 millimeters, you're gonna find that it's gonna spin or strip, and you're gonna have rounded edges that don't respond well. So a common mechanic tip is to just take a smaller socket and put it on there. When you look at this, an 18 millimeter socket would be your best choice, but you can see where if these rounded off, you could be tempted to put a 17 millimeter socket on it, and that's what happened. A 17 millimeter socket is not gonna go on there easy, but you can see how if you hit it with a hammer, you can press it on there. But the problem is, is the force of a hammer going on to a damaged lug nut that's soft like this is going to cause it to crush onto the wheel stud. And when that happens, they are not just a little stuck. They're not like cross-threaded stuck or just spinning in place. They are unholy stuck. And then they just tried to muscle it off. You can see that they about twisted the nut trying to get the thing off. The aftermarket ones are hard. They can take it and the caps fall off really easy. Um, they just, they don't stay on for crap. <laughs> They're absolutely terrible. Um, you can try siliconing them on. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, you can see it stuck to both of them, but it didn't stay on. Um, these were brand new aftermarket ones to remedy a problem and they didn't work. So if I have these on a Chrysler vehicle, one of the first things I do is get rid of them and go with a single piece. If you're going to put on a single piece, you might as well go with these Gorillas. And the reason why is you get a little bit of security to it because they have a key that goes with them. Any Joe with a tire iron can't take your wheels and tires. You have to have a key to get them on and off. The key looks like this, by the way. And it, this is a 19 millimeter and a 21. You see that's uh, 19 and then this is 21. This is the way to go. Um, some of them come with a key that looks like this. Other ones come with a key that looks like this, but it's the same thing. Just one's been chromed and one hasn't. You can see that the key looks like a tube. Fits on there. And they just fit in so pretty. I mean, it's just so nice to work with. There's six ways this can go on. It's hexagonal, basically. And they're just smooth and hard and they resist rust a lot better than some of the other ones do. These tend to get pretty dull. They're, they're chrome, they're nice, but this is nicer. You have a nicer sheen, a nicer, sleeker look. I just like them. As you can see, this one's a hexagon and this one is. The other three I've replaced with the Gorilla ones. You don't have to jack the car up or anything. Just do them in a V pattern like this. Pull off three on each of your four wheels. Put on three of the Gorillas. Get them all snug down. Go back over and then get the other two. And that way you're tightening in the star pattern. You don't have to jack it up. Never got love from the cover Bonus footage at the end. Wow, look at that, Jim.